Look, I know you've already achieved unheard of levels of success as an entrepreneur. So the real question is, while the world is radically shifting, how do we not get caught up in the chaos, but instead access our untapped capacity? You know what I'm talking about. I'm Katie Richardson, business coach to superstar entrepreneurs and host of What's Working Now. I'm here to show you how to unlock and magnify your untapped potential so that we can create the dream, live with purpose, and do what we are born to do. On this podcast, we are asking a different set of questions. Be present, be curious, be right now. Let's go. Hit that subscribe button and go to whatsworkingnow.com, drop in your email, join the wait list so you never miss an episode of What's Working Now. And I'll see you on the inside. Hello, hello. Welcome to What's Working Now. I've got an amazing entrepreneur with 30 plus experience in sales and marketing who has recently released a book. Okay. His name is Darren Kidd, best-selling author, global keynote speaker, executive trainer, and business growth consultant. He's been featured in top magazines and publications like Success From Home and spoken alongside gurus like Grant Cardone, ever heard of him? John Maxwell, Les Brown, Brian Tracy, and Mel Robbins. Darren Kidd, welcome to the show. Katie, thanks so much for having me. You and I met through a mutual friend and immediately there was connection, there was alignment and values. And, you know, you have a unique perspective. And I would love for people to hear the story of that experience that has really formed and shaped this perspective that you have. So tell us that story. Well, I appreciate it, Katie. Yeah. And considering I only have one friend, it was pretty awesome that we met, you know. So, (laughs) (laughs) okay. All right. That's what happens. You have five kids. I got dad jokes and they're pretty corny. So you may (laughs) for those uh, during during the podcast, but no, thank you so much. And I know you're doing amazing things. And so it was an honor being invited uh, to be on your podcast, but yeah, it was Mm -hmm. 25 years ago. We, you know, I walked into my wife and our master bedroom and I closed the door behind me, forgot to lock it. And I'm walking by our windows and there's sheets tacked on the windows because we couldn't afford curtains or mini blinds. And I walk over to my closet and I pull out this big two foot plastic Coca-Cola piggy bank. And I I drag it out of the closet. And in that bank, there was change that I told my daughter. I'm like, look, put your money in the bank in that piggy bank because someday we'll go to Disney World, you know, someday. Mm -hmm. And that was the same thing. 13 years ago, my dad passed away on his deathbed. He was saying someday. Someday we'll Mm. do this, someday we'll do that. And I learned real quick that someday leads to a town called nowhere. But I also learned that some people some days are other people's every days. And so here I was dragging this this bank out and I had it on the floor and all the change is everywhere and I can still smell that change smell. And I'm I'm on my knees going, God, how could I get this low to where I'm bankrupt on government assistance? They've just repossessed my car. Ugh. can't feed my family. I'm a college dropout. I'm living in a small town. Our house looks abandoned with sheets tacked on the windows. And, you know, everybody in our town knew that I was a failure. And I went to the doctor and I was on depression medicine, you know, which made wow. me feel worse than actual depression. And I'm like, how could I get that low? And at that time, my daughter busts through the door because I didn't lock the door. And she sees daddy taking her money for Disney World, because that's what I've been telling her, put your money in here. We'll go to Disney World someday. And she runs out crying. And mm. that was the day, Katie, that it hurt bad enough. That was the wow. day the, old, the farmer on the porch in a rocking chair and a, a neighbor's walking by going, hey, you know, mister, your dog, I can see him under the porch. He's laying on a nail. And he goes, don't worry about it. <clears throat> when it hurts bad enough, he'll move. So mm. that's when I got up off my knees. And, and I walked in the other room and I put on this three by five index card. I will until. I go, whatever it takes. I know I can't change my life overnight, but we can change the direction of our life overnight. And that's when I started the journey that changed everything in my world. And that's actually how the title of my book came about. I will until it was that motto. Wow. I appreciate that you pointed out that it took that level of pain before you started to change direction. And you talked about how we can't change everything overnight, but you can change direction. And, you know, that declaration that you made then pointed you in a new direction. What were some of the key things that you started to do differently 
that were creating that transformation and that change for not just you, but your whole family. Yeah. You know, up until that point, I was a victim, you know, poor pitiful me, mm. I went a small town. I couldn't make it through college. You know, why do bad things always happen to me? And we have to be very careful what questions we ask because the quality of our life is determined by the quality of questions that we ask ourselves. Yes. Get questions yes. get bad answers. Yes. So I started changing the quality of my questions going, and I took responsibility. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, a guy walked off building me a house, but who hired the guy? I did. Mm. So I've got to take responsibility. So when I started not only asking better questions, when I started looking at the challenges, you know, Katie, up until that point, I thought challenges and obstacles were a bad thing. But in reality, obstacles lead to elevation. Without obstacles, mm. there is no elevation. And it's not the easy times that make us grow. And but however, it's how we look at those easy times and the questions that we ask. So that when I started going, okay, not how can I just go through this? How can I grow through this? Mm -hmm. What can I learn? You know, how can I make better decisions? When I started asking better questions, thinking differently, you know, it, if, if our thinking is stinking, <laughs> our dreams are shrinking. And so I started thinking differently thinking about what I was thinking about, I started changing my associations, which that mm. is key because you show me your closest circle, I'll show you your future. And associations, and, and I know you have kids, I have kids, I'm constantly like, look, you know, your associations are like an elevator. They're either lifting you up or they're bringing you down. So we have to ask ourselves, what are my associations doing to me? Or what are they doing for me? John Maxwell mm. said, you can't change the people around you. You change the people around you. So I changed my associations as well. So good. And I mean, the core of all of that, it started here in your mind, your thoughts, the way you were viewing things, how you, the questions that you were asking, the way that you were talking to yourself, you noticed you were in this victim mentality and shifting to accountability and taking ownership. And it's really incredible when you kind of disrupt and stop the direction that you're going, stop it here mentally, it starts to show up in your feelings and your actions. And you took control of your life. Took yeah, charge. It, it, yeah. Anything that we ever achieve, we achieve and win in our head first. Yeah. Bob Proctor, the late Bob Proctor said, if you can envision it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. <laughs> and Katie, I just turned 50 years old in, you know, a couple months ago. And it's taken Happy me birthday. By Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. And it's taken me my entire life to finally get to the point where I, I knew before, but to really understand the power of what we think and what we speak, you know, what you think sure. about, you speak about, you truly do bring about it's a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. And so when you start to focus on, all right, well, you know, if we're, we think 70 to 90,000 thoughts a day, by the time we're 35 years old, the majority of our decisions are made by our subconscious mind. So you really have to start thinking about what you're thinking about. And we have to work really hard to reprogram the way that we've been raised, the people that we've been around, our associations. But when you start to be intentional and not just reactive, you understand, hey, look, I can actually, I can create the life of my dreams. I don't have to continue. Yes. To them. I don't have to be like a, a ping pong ball in the wind tunnel or a, a ship without a sail. I can go out and create exactly what I want to have with my life. Yeah. And let, let's walk down that road because when you take ownership for your life and you're no longer coming from that victim place and there's that place of accountability and you allow yourself to imagine and dream and play and think, and you start to go down that road, like, yes, we all have these moments of excitement and adrenaline. And then we start down this new path. And that new path is unknown. It's dark. It's scary. It's unfamiliar. And we can really start to doubt ourselves as we start to walk down this new path, right? Who do you think you are? Who says you're going to be successful at this thing? What are some things that you did as you were, as, because you made a big shift in the direction that you were going. Help us see what that looked like. You know, you were young, you were a college dropout, and then you had to go in some direction. So how did you take this new thinking and choose a, a new direction? And I'll just, I want to make sure everybody sees this. Yes, this was early in Darren's life, but I like every 
seven to 10 years, it seems like we can get to this point where it's like that path that I've been going down is no longer working for me. But what's that new path? There's oftentimes a lot of, I don't know around that. So how did you find clarity in this new direction where you wanted to go? Yeah, so many great points in what you just, those questions. Understanding the same version of Darren Kid that got me to where I was, even where I am right now, is not the same version that gets me to the next level. You know, uh, you yes, gotta differently. You got to act differently. And so, what happened with me is first getting clarity. People are like, man, I'm burned out. I'm unmotivated. No, I, I had a billionaire mentor. I was very fortunate and blessed for years that that uh, had 40 companies in 60 countries, and he paid for over a thousand kids a year to go to college. Just gave away 400 million to charity back when I was with him. And even though he passed mm-hmm. away over a decade ago at 80 some years old, it's still giving. And he talked about, you will never get past your self-imposed limitations. It's not what goes on around us that's as important as what goes on within us. And like right now, Tony Robbins is saying, look, the next five to eight years, we're going into a winter. We don't know how long yeah. it's going to last. You can freeze to death or you can snowboard and ski and have a great time because the biggest transfer of wealth happens during recessions, depressions, and during wars. Yeah. If we do the right things, we look to serve people and solve problems. And so for me, it was getting clarity. It's not burnout. It's not lack of motivation. It's lack of clarity. Clarity gives you focus and focus gives you energy. And anything we ever achieve, we achieve and win in our head first. What thou seest in, their he- in our head, thou beest. We magnetize Mm. the condition that we seek. And so now there's all this science proving proving how powerful our thoughts. Thoughts are things. What we think about, speak about, your words, they're seeds. You send them out on a mission. They don't come back void. You're planning. Another way I look at it, we're painting tomorrow today. So when I got crystal clear on what I wanted, And here's what's fascinating. Now the science shows that when you visualize a dream or goal or experience, your brain doesn't know the difference of reality and what you tell it. You produce the same chemicals and endorphins as if the experience actually happened. So you can experience an experience before we ever experience it. And why is that important? (laughs) I love that. And why is that important? Because we move in the direction of the things that we're familiar with. Yes, yeah. In, in, in comfort zones, when you're because even if you've had success, we're either growing or declining. Maintaining is a myth. We're yeah. either growing or we're ripe and rotten. And so that comfort <laughs> zone, it's looked at it looks at sameness as security. Anytime we start to do something that's different, and comfort zones are not comfortable, it looks at it as dangerous. Yeah. So anything that we ever our goals and our dreams, it's outside of our comfort zone. Right. For me, it was getting clarity on what I really wanted. Doing a, I remember when the billionaire told me to do a dream board. I'm like thinking in my mind, am I a kindergartner? But I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's his private jet I'm flying on, not mine. It's <laughs> his house, only the only private house on Seven Mile Beach in the Cayman Islands. It's not mine. He's right. paying for a thousand kids a year to go to college, not me. He understood that when you when you have clarity in what you want and your brain didn't know the difference in reality and what you tell it, good or bad, by the way, Katie. Yeah. We're we're our own pharmacy. If we're addicted to drama, have you ever known someone that's addicted to drama? And if there's no drama, they create it because they get addicted to their own drugs. Yeah. So we can use it as for good or for bad. So when I got clarity on what I really wanted, I started being intentional. I started focusing because some of you that are watching or listening right now, you may be where I was. I was having that pity party. They must come from a big city. I live in a small town. They must have a college education. I have a lack of education. They must be great public speakers. I'll pass out in front of five people if you put me in front of the room, even if I know them. Mm. Now, no one would have told me I'd be traveling around the world, speaking in front of 25,000 people and dancing like a crazy person on stage and having a blast. But I go, you know what? I've just got to focus on getting a little bit better today. Can I do that? And I heard Mm. a speaker go, can you read 10 pages out of a good book today? And in my mind, I'm like, well, I can, but I lose train my train of thought and I have to go back and reread it. <laughs> and But I can. That's about a book a month. Most people don't read a book a year. So in 10 years, you read 100 books. Most people hadn't read 10. You're listening to a podcast like this today with life-changing information from someone like Katie that is not just talking about stuff, like she's actually done it. 
And John Maxwell goes, look, a leader will tell but never teach until they practice what they preach. And we can't talk about what we don't do no more than we can come back from somewhere we've never been. So if you're mm. just getting a little bit better every day, I talk about it in my book, 1% better a day is 37 times better in a year. Sheesh. Not 37%. <laughs> but I started focusing on progress and not perfection mm -hmm. and just get a little bit better, doing it messy, but failing forward, understanding yeah. fear, failure and success, they're together, they're not separate. All of those things started to, at first, it's frustrating because they don't seem to make any difference. Mm -hmm. Compounded over a period of time, they made a massive difference. Huge. I mean, so many principles in what you just taught and the story and the examples. I really appreciate that. As you were navigating this scenery in front of you, I mean, you have a wife. Remind me, do you have four or five kids? I can't remember. Five kids. Five kids. Which explains my haircut. Like, that's, that's, a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. And, you know, people are always curious when they find out me and my husband built a business together. How did that dynamic look between you and your wife? Was she able to, I, I, I can see how you got there and you got the vision. Was she able to get there? If not, how did you navigate moving in that direction together? It's a process, uh, as you know, um, because there was a period of time where my income and in business started to grow beyond my leadership ability and mm -hmm. my skills. And our income yeah. always comes back to where we are. There's a reason that most people win the lottery. They go broke within 30 some months because they didn't become a multimillionaire. And most of them go back to a place worse than where they ever were before they wow. won the lottery. But if you take it from a multimillionaire, they'll go back and do it all over again. Right. So there's a period of time. Yeah. Five kids. And, you know, and I always tell people, be careful if you work from home, that could happen. You can have a bunch of kids <laughs> like we did, but <laughs> that's why, that's why we do what we do. Right. I love, yeah. my, love, love my family. But there was a time where if I was with my family, I felt guilty. I wasn't working. Mm. If I was working, I felt guilty. I wasn't with my family. I was never yes. present. I was on a treadmill going nowhere fast. Yeah. I, I hadn't developed leaders. <clears throat> I had no systems in place and processes in place. So I felt like if I stopped, my whole business would collapse. Yeah. That was tough. But when I started, continued to grow, understanding it's going to take a different version of me to get to the next level. And my wife, we're experiencing all of this together. And, and yeah, just like business, marriage can be an emotional roller coaster too, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And so we, we both grew. We both had a bunch of learning experiences because, yeah, we had multiple franchises five kids. I'm traveling the world, you know, working in the relationship marketing business at a team of a couple hundred thousand people. But what's crazy is at the, at that point I had more peace. I was happier. My business was growing light years faster. I had a 40 month window where my business grew faster than it would have the previous 40 years if you'd have combined it. Wow. I had more time, freedom, more peace, more everything because I finally started to be intentional about every area of my life. And that's, that's important because Katie, I'm sure you've experienced this too. We meet people and they don't focus on the whole wheel of life. They spend, they sacrifice their health, the first part of their life to gain wealth. Now the second part of their life, they're trying to spend all the wealth to gain back their health yeah. or they lose their family. So mm -hmm. I believe we can have it all if we're intentional and we set goals and we prioritize we can create the life that we, we deserve. Aaron, this is why we are here. Like you and I are practically brothers and sisters in entrepreneurship. Like that was my passion from the very beginning is yes, I want to accomplish and achieve the gifts and talents and abilities that God has placed inside of me. And my business is a powerful vehicle to do that, but can I do it without I, I was madly in love with my husband. I wanted to stay madly in love with my husband. I was having beautiful children. I wanted a relationship with those children. So often those seem very incompatible. And I love hearing you and your story and your example, because it, it's not easy. It's not. And it would have been easier for you to go work some corporate job and not be an entrepreneur who's, you know, creating a pathway through the jungle as we do as entrepreneurs. But because you made that decision to move in that direction, it's put you in a position where you are creating your 
life. Yes, you're creating a business and you're creating all kinds of books and leadership trainings and everything that you do inside of your business, which is amazing. It's incredible. But to do those things as you are also in tandem, holding hands with your spouse and deepening your relationship with your spouse and having these beautiful children, which by the way, are you okay? And now it's like your son just showed up right before we had this conversation with an announcement for you and you're having your first grandbaby. Like this is incredible, Darren. Yes. I mean, I, I recently spoke at a mastermind for um, Dr. Fab Mancini and mm. the, the next Dr. Phil and in the room was like John Asaroff from The Secret and previous masterminds I spoke at Les Brown, Brian Tracy. Um, one guy had a company done over 30 some billion. And I sit in front of one of the masterminds. I go, I feel like I'm the wealthiest person in the world. And there's people in the rooms, companies have done 30 some billion dollars. And I'm like, here's why I go, it's mm. not the money. I've been married 30 years. My marriage is better now than it's ever been in every area of the marriage. Um, just turned 50. I feel better now than I did in my 20s. My office, the reason that my son was able to run in here just now, the 24-year-old and his wife, because my boys, they have the first floor of the office. I have the second floor. I work with my children, right? Wow. So, you know, I feel closer to God than I ever have. Understanding that, look, eternity is a long time. <laughs> I pray yeah. for 30, 70 to 100 years, but eternity is pretty important. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> being able to continue to, to prioritize and be intentional and set goals and measure, performance measured is performance improved. Mm -hmm. You know, how am I doing? I mean, just this morning, I'm tracking how much every day, really, how much water am I drinking and all of those things. And it's not how much we do. It's the effectiveness of what we do is what Peter Drucker said. And so mm -hmm. as I get older, it's not about what to say yes to, Katie. It's about what you say no to. Yeah. Yes. To make sure yeah. that I'm keeping my priorities in order and I'm focusing on what matters most to me in my life. I was just about to ask you, like, what's working now? And I feel like you just, you just gave us that answer, really. Understanding your intention, understanding and deepening your relationship with God, being intentional in your life, organizing your life and setting it up in a way that you're living your values. The fact that you have your office in the same building as your sons and the fact that you're able to work alongside them and continue to develop your relationship with them. Like the, you are the wealthiest man, Darren, like at the end of the day, this is what everybody wants and tries to build and oftentimes gets really lost and disoriented in the process. Like building a business and the significance that can come with that and the network and the influence and the opportunity and the kind of attention and fame, it's intoxicating and it can become really easy to lose your way. And, and you're a man who has chosen to stay grounded, stay focused, stay clear on your values and live them. I have a question alongside that, which is, you know, nobody's perfect. And so there probably are ways in which you're not living certain values. How do you determine if you're in alignment in your values and, and how and where you're not? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, again, I think it goes back to being intentional. So I, I always try to plan my month before it begins. So when I was okay. in my office at the end of last week, <clears throat> you know, going, okay, what do I really want for May? And I'm not just looking at business. I'm looking at family, spiritual, physical, you know, financial, um, uh, let's say spiritual, all of those things. Yes. Like, yeah. what do I really want? Like, what, what am I focused on for the month of May? Mm. Then I go, what are my goals? You know, one to three business goals, one to three personal goals. And then what are the high payoff activities? And so I always try to plan my month before it begins. And then I do the same thing with my with my day. So when you evaluate those things and you're looking at your figs and gauges, <laughs> your KPIs, then it allows you, you still, you're going to fall off the wagon. We're human, yeah. but you learn to get back on the wagon a lot sooner than later. And so I do the yeah. same thing with my days. I'll plan tomorrow, today. <clears throat> I'll only allow myself to put three to five priorities down. I like pay, uh, to do's down. Okay. Because everything else goes in the future to do. Because what that does, it for forces me to focus on the most important things, the 20% that deliver the 80%. Yeah. And put everything else on the future to-do list. So when I get into my office and it's go time, then I know that I'm, 
you know, small hinges move big doors. So I'm knocking those out and I've penciled them in to my calendar to know when throughout the day I'm doing those things. I have my workout scheduled. I'm tracking my water. I've got little habits and rituals that I do throughout the day. I use the Pomodoro method. So I, every 25 mm. minutes, a timer goes off and I'm doing 20 push-ups and air squats and stretching and drinking water. <laughs> I love it. Have movement breaks. Cause if you change your, yeah. energy, <clears throat> change your physiology, you change your life. Sometimes I'll go, Hey, look, I'm going to take a walk with God. Cause I'm just, you know, feel a little overwhelmed and I'll go focus on prayer and breathing and gratitude. So first we create our habits and our rituals and they create us. So being intentional about my days, my weeks, my months, intentional about every area of my life, continuing to measure every area of my life. And, and, and then what you do is you figure out, Hey, look, I've got to readjust. A rocket is off track on the way to the moon 97% of the time but it continues to readjust. It still makes it. So with us, yes. it's just about awareness. Awareness leads to change and those things have really helped me. Darren Kidd, you have become a machine. It's really cool and inspiring to see. And I'm, what's cool is it's by choice, right? You, you are intentional about your life. You're intentional about your relationships, including your relationship with God. You're intentional about the value that cre you create inside of your business. And it has required you to set up habits and systems and processes to support you in those decisions so you can actually execute on those things. And like the result has been that Darren Kidd has become an incredible machine. And, and yet you have this softness about you too. Like as you found out that you were having this grandchild and what sex the baby was, you got really emotional, which is really cool. Like you have not become a robot. You're not just moving through the motions, but you are intentional about your life and the direction that you're going and what you want to accomplish and achieve. And, and, and I think in a lot of ways, it probably creates space for you to feel and be connected and have those moments of joy in your life. It's really inspiring, super inspiring. That, that means a lot to me. And I really appreciate that. And yeah, I don't know who's, there may be someone, I will guarantee you there's someone that needs to hear this, but the last few years have been the most challenging in my entire life. Wow. I almost died with appendicitis. Um, mm. So I had some health challenges. I've had some family members that have passed away. And there were times where I was going, man, God, you know, my heart, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying so hard. Am I being punished? And then mm. later on, you look back and you go, no, it wasn't punishment. It was preparation. Those wow. obstacles lead to elevation. Without obstacles, there is no elevation. And I believe that God knew, hey, look, to go out there and, and fulfill your purpose and to become that next version, you got to go through what God is trying to get you to. And so for those of you that are out there, maybe you're struggling, you're going, why? And, you know, it's, I, I was asking God to open the right doors, close the wrong ones, give me favor with the right people, give me the wisdom and knowledge to know the difference. And then getting mm. mad when he was actually doing that, because now I look back, go, that's exactly what he was doing. He was sometimes it wasn't rejection, it was redirection, it was protection. Mm. And I had to go through that to get to where he wanted me to be. And so I know that as we're going through challenging times and, and they're expected to go for the next few years, this is the time that we can go out there and shine. This is the time that we become that the same hammer that shatters glass, forges steel. Hmm. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, for being open. I know there's going to be a lot of people who really appreciate that honesty and that perspective. And that's consistently what I'm seeing a theme amongst your story is choosing the frame and choosing the perspective and asking those powerful questions. You talked a little bit about living your purpose. How do you define Darren Kidd's purpose? I'm sure it's constantly evolving and shifting? I'm just curious where it is right now. You know, that is a, <clears throat> that's a great question. I keep asking myself daily, I'm just going, yeah. God, use me. Like, you're taking, <laughs> use me. And I'll <clears throat> try not to get too emotional as I talk about this, but I think that one thing that we, <clears throat> we make the mistake is we think we have time. Mm -hmm. And so when I say the last few years have been the most challenging times, <clears throat> my nephew, his wife, 24 years old, 11 month old twins had a house fire my nephew and one baby did not make it. Wow. Had three surgeries in four months. Had a hiatal hernia repair. 
and you know, like heartburn surgery, then almost die with appendicitis in the hospital for half a month. You know, it was mm. gangrene leaking into my body. And wow. they're like, if, if if I hadn't been in shape, I would have died. Oh, <clears throat> then wow. I, I'm a mama's boy, right? So I've, uh, I would talk to my mom. My dad passed away 13 years ago. I said, mom, as long as God puts breath in my body, you're not going to have to worry about anything. I'm going to make sure the rest of your life is the best of your life. I went out, built her a six-figure business. She had new cars. I talked to her at least two or three times a day. You know, she would uh, eat with us almost every night. And she she got COVID at the beach. And, mm. and I took her to meet the girls for Girls Week. She didn't feel comfortable. And on the way back, uh, and nine days out of it, she her heart went to atrophib. I rushed to the hospital. They put her on some medication. Her kidneys shut down. And for three and a half weeks, she went through hell. Wow. And I had to make the decision to pull the plug. And as I'm standing there holding her hand as she walked into heaven, I'm like, she's empty wow. in a good way. She loved, there was nothing else to give. She gave, mm. I took the Bible out of her seat after she passed away. And I'm like, if that was me, would I be ready? <clears throat> and the answer was no, I've been holding back. Like we worry about what people think. And the last time I checked, well, you can't put your kids through school. You can't give to your church. You can't give to a charity with other people's opinion. And I'm like, mm. if that's me, I've been holding back. I've not lived up to my full potential. I would have regrets if that was me unhooking that machine right now. And so whether you're, and my wife's grandfather over a decade ago passed away at 99. So whether wow. you're 24 years old, like my nephew that passed away, 11 months old, like one of his babies that passed away, 67, like my mom, or 99, like my wife's grandfather, the key is to treat every day as if it's the last day of our life. And one day we're going to be right. So mm -hmm. with my vision, here, here's the thing. I used to think, man, what is an old country boy from a small town of Virginia who's dropped out of college, who's depressed, who can't feed his children, can't support his wife? What purpose do I have? How many people can I actually impact? I would have never guessed I'd be traveling the world and having my videos viewed in 50 plus countries and having the ability. And now I understand it's a it's not only my purpose, it's my passion, but it's my responsibility not to look at people as how they are, but how they can be with their God given potential. So treat every day as if it's the last day of your life. And one day we're going to be right. But we think we have time and we do not know. So my purpose, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm asking God to use me. But my purpose is to go out and help people reach toward their God-given potential. And it's the people right now. And I believe, Katie, and I know you do too, we're made in the image of our creator. We're created for success and the world programs us for failure. On a yes. day basis, they want to tell us more about our limitations than our yes. possibilities. And I'm not going to settle for that. And I'm not going to let other people settle for that. Mm. Darren, yes, yes. And you're living it. You are a living example of this. Somebody who wakes up every day, makes those decisions, lives with intention. I'm curious how you have turned that into a business model. Because it's one thing to feel called. It's one thing to live life with intention and purpose in like the big picture sense. But how do you tactically start to turn that into a business? How have you done it? Well, it started out, you know, I've had the, the friend, well, several ways I've had it online, you know, I went from bankrupt to have been in relationship marketing for 28 years. So mm -hmm. I did that. I was very blessed. I failed for seven years. And then for 20 some years, I was able to go out and build teams all over the world. I purchased franchises and I was able to apply marketing techniques and strategies and retention and all of those things into actual traditional businesses. And we were very fortunate to do extremely well with those. Um, I used that to go build online and, you know, build hundreds of thousands of followers and, and e-commerce and things like that. And so it got to the point going, you know, I'm, I'm using other things as crutches to keep me from going to my full potential. And for me to ever go out and impact that, them, is, that is a impact. that is a real moment of honesty right there. I had to pause right there. Say that again. I was using things as a crutch to keep me in my comfort zone, Man. but it was all subconscious. Yeah. It wasn't even conscious. It was like I had to have other people to achieve my goals and my dreams. When in reality, I didn't. And so then, mm. when I go, man, I've spent thirty years as an entrepreneur. 
I've failed thousands of times. But over the three decades, I've spent multiple six figures. Matter of fact, the last 36 months, I've spent multiple six figures in me. Knowing the same version of Darren Kid that got me to where I am is not the same version that gets me to the next level. Oh, yeah. I'm like, and not only that, what we don't know can cost us a fortune because it cost me a fortune not knowing what <laughs> I did. I yeah. remember maybe one time hiring one of the top 20 YouTubers in Forbes. I've done it multiple times. And I had people going, why would you pay that kind of money? I'm like, why would I not? There's two ways to get there. I can spend 12, 10, 15 years of my life, make tons of mistakes, or I can pay him or like you, Katie, by mm -hmm. your experiences, shave years off my learning curve, compress time okay. frames, and get to where I want to be a lot sooner than later. So most people look at hiring a coach, a mentor, someone like that as a cost. Wealthy people look at it as an investment. Yes. And so for me, when I did those things that made me a lot of money, then people have the nerve to say, you must have gotten lucky. No, <laughs> I was willing to do what you were willing to do to have what you don't have. So now yeah. I wanted to be the person to that I wish I would have had decades ago when it comes to business to shave those years off my learning curve, compress time frames. And so I've turned that into now I'm ramping up my speaking, coaching, training, executive coaching, consulting business. And that's why you and I, we've, you know, I, I thank God we've connected and looking forward yeah. to working with you. But yeah, so applying those principles to be the person I wish I would have had. And that's what it comes down to, right? Like it's one thing to have structures and frameworks and systems. Those are awesome and great. But when the principles can live within you and you're moving through life and all of a sudden there's a fork in the road and you have a decision to make, when you understand those principles, you have clarity at that fork in the road and you can make decisions based on your values, based on where you're oriented and where you want to go because you truly understand them and you can apply them and live them doesn't mean it's easy and it doesn't mean there aren't moments where we are unsure and even maybe we have clarity it doesn't mean it's easy to move in that direction a lot of times that clarity can invite us to move in a direction that is the more the difficult direction to go in right it's not the obvious one it's not the well lit, -lit path it's more dark <laughs> and unknown and can feel risky and it's great to meet somebody who has chosen to step into the dark as many times as you have and um, seen the level of growth that is provided for you and your family and deepen your relationship with God. It's like, it's truly inspiring. And I really feel like entrepreneurship is the greatest self-development course you'll ever take if you know how to use it the right way. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've approached it in that way and you've allowed it to not just create resources. Of course, it has to do that. That's that's the purpose, right? But it's also created opportunities for you to grow and stretch and become who God created you to be. And you've chosen to go on that journey. And a lot of people don't. They mm. just don't. It's all about other things, right? <laughs> yeah, and one and, of my mottos now is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even if it's in a room, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I want to be in a room that people make me nervous. Yeah, I don't think you're the smartest person in the room. You're in the wrong room. Yeah, and the thing that you said it's true. Me, it, it is. It's, it's yeah. the lid. I have what I call the LTL method, the lift the lid method. And okay. you know, what what is that? It's that invisible lid in our own head that we're never going to get more than we feel like we're worth. The enemy is actually inside me. It's mm. inside you. And oh, if yeah. we feel like we're only, you know, I've heard different people use it as an internal thermostat. If you feel like you're a 75 degree person, no matter what happens, you're always going to cool it back down. You'll self-sabotage. Oh, yeah. We're, like we're, we're going to get what we're worth. And, and Katie, there were times when I was broke. I was just as broke at certain times, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year as yeah. I was when I had no money because I didn't feel worthy. I felt guilty because the people around me were struggling and I would find ways to get rid of it. So if you don't yeah. find a way to raise that invisible lid in your own head, then it doesn't matter what you learn, it's always going to come back. And you're just going to, how do I always barely just get by? Why do I always get, you know, three steps forward and I get kicked four steps backwards? No matter what happens in life, I'm always right here. It's because that invisible lid, we will never get past our self-imposed limitations. So we have to work on that invisible lid, that philosophy, that attitude, the filter system that's been programmed into us our entire life. And it takes some time, but it's it possible, doable. It takes time and it often also takes an outside perspective and you are living that, right? 
you're working with mentors and coaches and joining masterminds. So you can see and expose those limitations that we are always blind to. A blind spot is called a blind spot because it's blind to us. <laughs> yeah. Les Brown says, look, it's hard to read the label when you're in the box. It's hard yes. to make sure when you're in the frame. Yeah. I know how to work out, may not look like it, but why do I have a trainer at the gym? Because you're going to push me outside of my comfort zone. I choose accountability because apathy is a natural human instinct common to us all to seek a comfort zone where nothing ever changes. So if we mm. want to get something different. We have to do something different. So we have to work on our thinking, which drives our behaviors. We have accountability. We have coaches and mentors because all it takes is that one aha moment to completely change everything. So all of those things, that little formula starts to work together and compound it over a period of time, changes your world. So for everybody listening, Darren just gave you the formula. If you want growth, if you want expansion, if you want to level up in your life in all areas of life, this is the formula. He's just laid it out for us. And it's not complicated, but it's certainly not easy. And a lot of times, to your point, we get in our own way and we stop ourselves from that growth and that expansion. And we self-sabotage and we go back to the place that feels comfortable, right? That comfort zone. Because outside of there is, is uncomfortable. It's un, unfamiliar and can be intimidating and scary. So you just you just laid it out so beautifully. Darren, this has been absolutely amazing. I know we're just scratching on the surface of how you can help people. Tell us a little bit more about the book and where people can go, because I know you also have a workbook that goes along with the book. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so they can go to IWillUntil.com and they can you know purchase the book. And it's, it's a little over 100 and some pages. I call it snackable content. <laughs> Love it. Because um, that's the way I like to read. It's something where you can just open it up and you should be able to find a little golden nugget no matter which page you open it up on. But it's what I put in the book was what really started to change my world. And mm. uh, so you can purchase that. Also, I have a planner on that website. It's completely free. You can download the planner. You just go to resources. And that helps you start being intentional about planning your day. So you'll see on the planner, you can list your to-dos, you can track your water, you can track your movement breaks, you know, throughout the day mm. to change your physiology, change your energy. Yeah. And then they can reach out to me. You can see my speaking page. So if you want to get a good laugh, if you just need a pick me up, you can see me attempting to dance in front of thousands of people on the speaking reel on my speaking page. Okay. Okay. I love it. It's awesome. Darren, this has been amazing. I really appreciate you sharing your story, your unique perspective, the questions that you ask, and ultimately kind of the formula that has helped you create success, not just in your business, but in your whole life. It's truly inspiring. And if you have a couple minutes, I do have a couple rapid fire questions I want to ask. Okay. Let's see if I have any left. Okay. <laughs> What's something that you do consistently every day? Consistently every day, I get up, I drink 20 ounces of water, I listen to uh, a sermon. And I listen mm. to my Bible on audio on the way to the coffee shop. And then I listen to personal development. So that's the first part of my day. And then I wrap it up very similar because if I can kick off my day in my day the right way, I can handle what happens in the middle a lot better. I love it. So good. Tell us about a book that maybe you frequently revisit and keep it on your nightstand. Not just those one good reads, but something that you, keeps you coming back. Oh, my goodness. Um Anything John Maxwell, mm. anything John Maxwell, developing okay. in you is a good one to start. If you have a team around you, develop the leaders around you. Love it. So good. Is there any great advice that you've received in your life that really helped you in a moment of difficulty? You know, I, that's, I was just thinking about that this, this morning. So that's a great question. I remember when some crazy things had happened and I was just like going, my mom was running wild mm -hmm. and there was a friend of mine who had actually went to prison wow. and she got out of prison and it was for something that she didn't even do. And, and I met this lady through business, through events and a person said, look, what is the worst thing that, what, what is the worst thing that can happen? What's your biggest fear? She goes living under a bridge. And he goes, well, would that happen? She's like, no, I've got friends that would actually let me live with them before that happened. Well, could you live with that? She says, yes. Well, now that you understand, you know, you could live with the po worst possible case scenario, do everything in your power to make sure that it never happens. 
And she went on to make, she makes millions and millions a year. She speaks all mm. over the world. She's got a phenomenal story. So when I did that going, okay, what's the worst possible case scenario? Could I live with that? Yes. Now I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. Focus on what I can do, not what I can't do. Focus on where I'm going, not where I've been. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Super inspiring. Darren, this has been phenomenal. I love the philosophy that you live. You don't just speak it, you live it. And it all sounds like it's encapsulated in your book. I will until, make sure you go to IWillUntil.com. You can learn more about Darren. You can buy his book and get the planner as well. I would encourage all of you to also follow him. Where, where are you most active on social? Um, well, a lot of times we're multi-purposing. <clears throat> so whether sure. you're on Facebook, Instagram, and we've been revamping some stuff, so you're going to see us really crank the content back up. Cool. Awesome. Darren, this has been incredible. And for everybody who's listening, this is What's Working Now. Hey, What's Working Now listeners, what if you could turn your vision into reality? It turns out it's not that complicated. And the secret is revealed in my incredible guidebook, Be The One, how to plan and execute your unique vision. It features my custom GPS method to ensure you get there fast. With this guidebook, you'll create a clear vision a plan, and a path for getting there fast. Now you'll finally know where to focus and if you're on the right path. You can get your copy today for less than the cost of a Chipotle dinner. So if you're an entrepreneur and integrity matters to you, faith and family matter now, not later, and you feel called to make big contributions to the world, go to now.katierichardson.com forward slash guidebook and get started living your purpose today.